Hello and welcome back for another video in my series, Start From Scratch, with the Boss RC600 Loop Station. If you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe as it really does help a channel grow. If you've been following along, then you'll know that in the last video, what we did was we went into the loop menu and went into the sub-menu, Tracks. Let's have a closer look at the menus. Going into loop, where we were in the last video was here in track. And in this sub-menu, you have to go through six different times, once for each track. So, all of the settings that were here, and there are one, two, three, four, five screens. Then you have to go to track number two, because all of that was just for track one. So, that's a fairly lengthy process. And now we're going to go into the rest of this submenu. We're going to go into record and play. So let's start this video going into the record submenu. And the first parameter is record action. And that is, of course, whether you're going to go from record into play mode or from record into overdub mode. Now you might be the kind of player that wants to go straight to overdub when you're done your first layer and I'm not quite good enough to be able to do that just yet. So I'm going to leave my machine set to go from record into play. Now some people have been asking if you can switch this on the fly and no you can't. But thanks to one of the group experts in the Boss RC600 Loop Station group, he has shed some light on a way to be able to choose which of these two actions you go to at any given time on the fly. So a special shout out to Rob Killian. Thank you very much, Rob. That's a very good, uh, clever way to use the functions that you've shed some light on. We'll maybe go over that in a future video. And going on to the next setting is Quantize, currently off I'm going to turn it on and it'll be set to measure. Auto record I'm going to leave alone for now and I'm going to scroll to the next screen and it is the bounce selections. When I bounce the tracks over to a new track I only want to be able to receive tracks 1, 2, and 3. For me tracks 4, 5, and 6 are going to be off and the function itself will stay off. It'll be switchable later on in a, in a future video. Anyway, that is all for the record functions. So I'm going to exit this and now we'll go into play. And the first parameter that we see is S-Track Change. And that refers to all of the tracks that are set to single mode. When you want a single mode track to change from one track to the next single mode track, immediate means just that. It will happen immediately when you press the, the foot switch. I don't want that. It could also change at the next measure, or it can change at the end of the current loop. And that's what I want. It might be a 33 measure loop going into the next single mode track, which could be I don't know, 28 loops, it, uh, it, 28 measures rather. So loop end is typically what most people want for S-Track change. Single mode loops tend to be longer sections of a song, maybe an entire chorus or a verse or who knows what, a bridge maybe. And loop end is typically where most people want to set that parameter. Current track, that's a parameter that I believe is only appearing in this submenu because they have supplied us a way to switch the current track to any other given track and I believe this is only here as a filler because they they couldn't disallow it from appearing in this mode given the programming behind the scenes so that I haven't found a use for it being on the screen it does have a function though in the foot switches which we will sometime get into in another video. Next is fade time and for fading in I typically don't use it but if I did I would probably want it set to maybe 
Well, two measures is probably reasonable. For me, I do use fade out, and when I do use fade out, I probably want it to go for maybe 12 bars. So I'm going to set it for 12, and we will determine when that fade out gets used in another function. Moving on to the next screen, there is all start and all stop track select. So when I press all start, what tracks do I want to come on? Well, tracks one, two, and three are multi-mode tracks, but tracks four and five are single-mode tracks. I probably don't want those to come on when I press all start, and I wouldn't want my bounce track to come on uh, if I was using this. It's likely going to be just my multi-mode tracks, my rhythm section that I want to come on. All stop though is a different story. When I press all stop when something is playing, everything will come to a stop and I'd like that to probably affect everything and so I'm going to leave that one as is and move on to the next screen. And here we see loop length and I believe that should always be left to auto and what that means is that it's the calculation that it will come up with once I set my first loop. Speed change and sync adjust, I'm going to leave alone. It's not part of what I'm going to be working on in this series of videos. We'll take that up sometime later. And that is all for the play submenu. So we can exit from there and exit from there back to the, the main screen. And of course, we are working in a per memory basis. And anytime you're working in the loop menu, you do have to press uh, write and save all of your changes because that's not a global setting in, a, in any way at all. We always have to save it and that will ensure that everything stays put as we have just set it. And that is all for this video. Now in the next video we're going to soon be starting to populate all of these foot switches that are currently turned off. And there's a reason for that. All of the recording and track select and whatnot happens here on my external foot switches, these two FS6s. And now I have three modes of eight buttons that are virtually unused. And we can start populating all of those switches in the next video. So please stick around. Remember, hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And we will see you in the next video. Bye now.